Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast. You're in the right place if you're a growth-seeking being who acknowledges the challenges and delights of your humanity on the path to an ever more conscious life. If you want to feel inspired to love and accept yourself, to feel free to be and express you in all your brilliance, if you want to truly value yourself and others and feel energized and alive both at home and in the world, then sit back and take a breath as you explore and grow the brilliance of your beautiful human self with your host, the father of non-personal awareness and creator of the MPA process, Joel Young. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. This is episode number 33. Good Lord. That's a master number. You know, last week, (laughs) if you listen to last week, it was a bit of a revelation um, about working without a script and just letting rip. Um, And uh, what happened, if you haven't heard it, is is I realized that as I went on this podcast platform where I record, um, record what I'm saying, has a 30-minute timeout on each block of recording, and it cut out halfway through. And um, but one of the th- and I carried on talking. One of the things that I was I'd actually talked about was numerology. Uh, so I laugh at myself noticing the number 33. Uh, at some point in the future, I'll probably do a, a podcast on numerology. If that interests you, do let me know. Um, but welcome if you're new. I'm already off and running. <laughs> I'm so glad that you found me and found this podcast. Uh, I hope that you stick around. Uh, Do hit that subscribe button and, uh, you know, so we can let you know when each episode comes out. Uh, And if you're back again for more, fantastic. I love that you've returned. In fact, I got a lot of feedback for last week's episode. I'm so grateful. So many of you reached out in very supportive ways. Um, and it seemed like, you know, actually it, it worked really well. And here I am again. I've got a couple of bullet points on my page of what I want to talk about today. Uh, but flying free. Um, it seems that a lot of you felt that what I actually had to say, and, and if you don't know last week's episode, which you can find at www.babrillinhuman.com slash 32, um, was about dropping the mask and embracing your flaws. And quite a few people said that that was really relevant to them, very much on point. Uh, and also I got the feedback that people did find that it felt more connected than than it had been before. So thanks so much for, for reaching out. I do appreciate getting that feedback from you. And again, keep it up. Just let me know each, each episode, you know, how you found it. Was it useful? Was it relevant? And again, always I'm open to requests and questions, uh, which can stimulate my uh, what I choose to, to share with you. I always hope that this is um, is relevant and is useful. It's one of my big things is to is to sort of offer sort of practical, inspiring, and in a sense, sort of thought provoking, growth stimulating content on this podcast. So um, yeah, so make sure you subscribe. The other thing I'd like to ask you to do is, if you do like this podcast, go tell somebody. There's nothing better than than sort of in terms of spreading it. And obviously, I would I would love for more people to listen to this podcast than letting someone know, hey, I heard this great podcast. Just go on to beabrilliantheuman.com or just go on to your favorite podcast platform tell them you know search be a brilliant human you will find it press play and enjoy and i so appreciate all of you who have already done that um last thing on that is of course i'm open to having um messages from you in terms of you can email me joel at nonpersonalawareness.com and also you can leave me a voice message if you like just go to the website again www.beabrillianhuman.com it's pretty straightforward isn't it um, and you can uh, and you can uh, hit the button that says leave me a message and you can literally leave a voice message, which I could, again, if that's OK with you, put it on the show so I can have uh, the listener appear on this show. That would be great. All right. So today I'm talking about how to handle uncertainty and flow forward. That's the title of this one. So here's what happened this morning. Um, so I'm recording this. This is Monday, the 11th of May. Uh, it goes live tomorrow, Tuesday 12th. And it was interesting because I was pondering what to talk about. And we're coming into that phase. If, if you listen to this, like in the future, I should put echo on that in the future, 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 then, um, you know, you remember that 
about now, sort of beginning of May uh, in 2020, we're sort of in the midst of the you know COVID-19 pandemic. And the whole world really is getting to that stage where we're looking at easing the lockdown. And here in the UK, last night, our Prime Minister Boris Johnson did an announcement on his plan to, uh, you know, to, to how we're going to look at easing. It was the plan about the plan about the plan of easing lockdown. <laughs> and I didn't see it last night, but I woke up this morning and thought, well, I ought to have a look at that. I don't generally watch the news. That's not something that I do. I find that most of it doesn't really serve me um, in terms of filling my brain with uh, with positivity. It's not really its job, it seems to me. Uh, but there are times where it's useful to know, you know, what the what the lay of the landscape is. So I watched the the talk, and it seemed like okay. I get where he's coming from, um, but I think like many people this morning, there's a lot of questions being raised. So as a, a human as I am, you know, I thought I need some answers to those questions. So I I went on to YouTube and I found some reports from the BBC, where you know the the news pundits are going into asking the questions and, you know, giving it a hard time and all of those things. And I got a sense, and this is what really inspired today's episode, that sort of that there was a sort of an energy around the whole thing of sort of this, this kind of a, it like a panic, a sort of a, a, a stressful response and a, and a scrabbling for those answers. And, you know, what I realized is that this is very much you know, this is very much a a very human thing. I mean, for me personally, I I went there going, well, my question was, well, what does it mean for me? How does it affect me specifically? You know, what is it that I can do now or not do now that I could do before? Those are the kind of questions. And I think that this kind of situation where we're coming out of what's already been a changed condition with the lockdown into this new unknown sort of new normal and how's it going to work – it just invites us to confront uncertainty and invites us to confront the unknown. Now, this is a really good example that, in a sense, because of the, the global nature of the pandemic, we're all sharing um, this experience. But it's one of those things, and this is why it inspired me to do the podcast today. Um, it, it's something that we meet time and time again in life where we hit uncertainty. I mean, any time that you face some kind of uh, change or newness, then there's a sense that there's that unknown could sort of looms up before us. We go into that state of uncertainty, and then that can be a real challenge. So much as it was kind of inspired by the lockdown situation, which is now, um, I think this is a topic that's really worthy of investigation because as you come to to learn how to to deal with and gracefully manage uncertainty in your life, it's a hugely powerful skill that you can you know you can practice. So I thought I'd, I'd look at you know why <laughs> why why is it an issue? Um, <laughs> why do we have a problem with uncertainty? Surely we should just roll with it. But it's it's interesting because if you think about the nature of the mind, in a sense, the mind craves certainty. The mind itself, the job of the mind is to figure things out. It's to, to filter what comes into us and sort out some kind of sense and reason. So in a sense, one of the main things that is going on when we hit uncertainty and we feel stress is that sort of sense of the mind's craving. I mean, it craves a sense of, it wants a sense of direction, which in a sense is about wanting a sense of purpose and it wants clarity. Now, I'm a massive fan of clarity and I think it's it's really powerful clarity in communication, clarity in terms of what you want. All of those things are, are really, really powerful. But sometimes in life, there are situations where the clarity isn't obviously or immediately available and the same goes for purpose and a sense of direction these are all wonderful things but that's one of the the reasons why our our mind goes into stress because it seems like in the uncertainty uncertainty we don't have those things and the mind really likes them and the other thing when i was thinking about you know why is this an issue um i mean partly it comes from conditioning because I think in our society, you know, certainly in the Western society right now, we're sort of conditioned to expect certainty. And one of the ways that 
that that is often given to us is through external advice, or it's one of the ways we see we seek out external advice to help us get our sense of certainty. And um, and in a way, it, it, the, the sort of sponsoring question, I suppose, with that is, you know, what what do I do? <laughs> What do I do? Help me. Somebody tell me. Tell me what to do. Now, if you go back to episode 29, I was talking about your authority response. And I think partly there, there's a way that your response to uncertainty has is very closely linked to your authority response. Again, you can find the episode. I'll link it in the show notes. Uh, today's show notes will be www.beabrillianthuman.com slash 33. But if you go to that same URL slash 29, you can go back and listen to the, there's four authority responses. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what they are. They're, they're passive obedience, resentful obedience, reactive rebellion, all of which are kind of projected responses. And then there's conscious empowerment, which is in a sense what I'm encouraging you to look at with uncertainty here. But there's definitely, when it comes to seeking external advice, I don't think it's something that um, you know, the reactive rebellers do so much, but certainly the the, the passive obedience folks um, really tend to rely on external advice as their means of certainty. And for those of you who have resentful obedience, you like to think you don't, but when the chips are down, <laughs> you start to realize that reliance is there. And I suppose the last sort of reason why, in a sense, why it's 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 difficult for us to deal with uncertainty and the things it brings up is the general discomfort um and discomfort is like a, a feeling that we get and um what we often do with discomfort we we label it as bad <laughs> you know it doesn't feel great we label it as bad and then we seek to sort of resolve it and then we again look externally for some way to uh, to give us something outside of ourselves so that we can resolve that discomfort. So here's what I want to do. I want to go through those those reasons why. I'm gonna, again, I tell you, I love to give out practical stuff. I want to look at how you might approach each of those different, um, I guess, different reasons why and, and the nature of the discomforts and the, the stuff that's going on there and give you some sort of practical ways to, to approach it because that's a really powerful thing. And then I'm going to go into, there's kind of uh, one ring to bind them all. There's, there's kind of a, there's one thing that really trumps the whole of this issue. So we're going to talk about that also. <laughs> Okay, so before we go into some specifics of how to deal with uncertainty, I want to talk about some sort of more, or speak about it in a more general way, I guess. So the first thing is, um, I hope I can explain this really clearly, but I tend to think of, you know, most of the issues in life, and uncertainty is certainly one of those, as kind of a dance between the internal and the external. Now, certain philosophies or ideas will sort of make the external completely wrong and make it entirely about the internal, and and vice versa. Some some ways of thinking will say, well, it's the real world, and the in the subjective inner world is is kind of just this you know ephemeral thing that means nothing. But I, I really think that, that both are, are very valid. And I think it is kind of, it's like breath. It goes in, it goes out. You know, there is an interaction between the internal and the external world. Certainly, that's been my experience as a human. And in the context of being a brilliant human, I think it's important to understand the, the dance that, that goes on. So often the presenting conditions are external and, and they're, they're difficult. But what the issue is then, if you come internal, is they create some kind of discomfort or uh, challenging feelings. And then often we'll go you know, outside um, to sort of look for some new external conditions that will solve our inner, you know, our inner issue. Um, and then we get that internal resolution. Now, you'll notice on lots of these podcasts, you know, I, I tend to look at if you start with the resolution from an internal place, then you can come back out into the external with a with a redefined sense of what will meet the inner requirement. So a classic example of that is the unconditional pivot exercise, which I shared, I think, in episode 27, but I'll put it in the show notes anyway. Um, and it's certainly part of what I'm going to suggest in response to uncertainty. It's a great tool to use. So the point, I guess, of, of this 
understanding of the dance between external and internal it's like when you when you allow that relational interplay between the two and you're not attached so specifically especially to the external conditions then you'll find that you can you, you can sort of weave your way to the, to a point where the the internal um, ultimate things that you're looking for because we ultimately are looking for feelings that's that's my view but there can be expressions of those um, or expressions in the outside world that will be in alignment with what we're looking for internally so uh, uh, maybe I should give an example of that because that's, that's quite <laughs> that's a lot of internal external in one go I hope that's clear but I suppose if you think about it um, in terms of like, you can think about how feelings affect your behavior, for example. So let's say I just on the fly here, I say stand on one leg and it's a, it's a scary thing. If, you, if you've got fear going on, that's the internal thing. Then the external response to that may be tightness in the muscles and then your mind going busy. And, and in that case, it may be really challenging to stand on one leg. Whereas if you then come in and say, well, what would I love to be experiencing? What would be the most helpful internal experience um, to help me stand on one leg? Then you maybe breathe, you, you stop, you get still, and then you come out again, and then your approach to standing on one leg may be very different, and you might, might find it a lot easier. Now, this example, now I'm going through it, isn't necessarily always the case, because sometimes the external things are very different. But how the external expression changes is that the body will be responding differently. So the muscles will be on board, the mind will be on board. And so the expression of standing on one leg becomes much easier. So that's why there's a dance and an interplay between the two things. I feel I should give another example with, with different external responses. So let's say that there's an example where you feel like you need to... Um, See, now I'm, my mind my mind is going into the unknown. <laughs> what example can I give? I haven't written one down. Okay, let's say, let's say you've got an example where you want to achieve a specific goal. And the specific goal could be that you want to, say, um, you know, reach a thousand people on your podcast. <laughs> How about that one? You know, and, and so you go out and, and you go, that's what I want. And then, you know, you think, well, what, what do I feel? And you go out and maybe not so many people come along and then you start to feel a sense of inadequacy or a sense of, of, of disconnect from what you want to feel. So then I might come back in and say, well, what's the internal thing that I would like to, to experience really from that very specific goal? Or maybe it would be a sense of, of feeling that I, I've got progression. See, I'm using I now. It's a clue, isn't it? I've got a sense of progression from, from the growth that I've got. So in a way, I've redefined it because I want to connect to the internal sense of progress. That might be a sense of, um, you know, feeling good about myself, feeling successful, whatever the, the, the internal stuff is that's going on. So then I can go out back into the external world, world with a re redefined goal, if you like, which says, um, you know, maybe I, I want to experience so many people signing up and subscribing to the podcast you know, every month. So I've redefined the external metrics based on the internal desire. But more than that, what I've done is I've said, well, I understand that what I want is the feeling. So as I go out into the world, I can watch the metrics and all that stuff, knowing that I'm starting from a place of going, you know what, I feel okay inside. So I don't know if those, <laughs> I don't know those examples work very well. The point is that there's a dance between internal and external, and it's not that one is stronger than the other. It's just that they tend to lead one into the other. And where the external is creating an issue, if you've got fixated on an external, you can come inside, um, redefine things, and then come back out. And that way you tend to navigate through things pretty well. And next up is is the point about you know asking questions for clarity when you're facing the unknown. I think it's a really valid thing to ask questions. Um, I'm not saying in in this podcast or that you should just ignore the questions and just feel good regardless. 
because that because of that dance of internal and external i think it is really valid i mean i went looking this morning because i wanted specific answers but the issue comes and, and again I, I was noticing the journalists you know they tend to be fairly aggressive and in my again my opinion they have an agenda to sort of create the drama of of conflict uh, but it, but in general, that's what they're doing. They're asking, I guess, the most positive intention is they're asking the questions of the people to try and meet, uh, get more detail to stave off the uncertainty. But there's times, and this is the point really today, when, you know, th there aren't any answers yet, you know, that the answers just are not there. Um, you know, and in, in a sense, what can happen there is this, if you're in a state of fear, then it can breed more fear. You start scrabbling for more questions when they're just not there or more answers when they're just not there. And this can this can put you on a um, an unhealthy spiral into greater and greater fear and panic and then panic, panicking actions, reactions. And a lot of a lot of crazy shit happens in the world because of that very, very thing. But I think it is valid to ask the questions. It's just when they we don't have answers, that's the time to really look at how you can deal with the uncertainty. And the final thing I want to say in, in, the, in the general sense is that, you know, the different reasons why that I've given, um, I, I think there's a sort of, there's an interlinked sort of dynamic that goes on. Often if you resolve one of them, the others will resolve. So, you know, if, you, if your mind's cra craving certainty and you find it, you know, then the conditioning goes away, the discomfort goes away. Um, you know, also, if, you, if you're looking for external advice and, and you get, you know, you get some kind of resolution around that, then there won't be such so much craving, you know, and again, the discomfort goes away. So there's, there's an interplay um, between all three of them. It's not quite so, um, you know, black and white uh, about there being this one, this one or this one. All right, with that said, um, let's go through, I mean, they're pretty straight, I think they're pretty straightforward sort of ways to deal with these things, at least in terms of what I'm going to suggest you do. But let's go through them um, one by one. And because I've learned that if I let the, if I let the recording run, uh, it might run out on me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a quick musical break and then we'll come back with those very practical solutions. <laughs> Oh, that's better. <laughs> Always good to model self-care. Part of my brain was wondering, how long have I been speaking for? I think it was only about eight minutes or so, but that's the thing. Time, when you're in the flow, time just has no meaning. Um, so by hitting pause, I've, I know that I've got plenty of time to talk about these next bits. All right, so let's get into it. So um, let's start with craving certainty. So when I talked about craving certainty, there were kind of two levels to it. There was just the, the general sense of, uh, you know, seeking certainty. And then there was the deeper side of it, which was direction, purpose, and clarity. So you can actually meet this on two levels. And the way that I'm going to suggest you do it at, at, at this level of really meeting the the external conditions and finding new ways to, to find them um, is, again, my, my being a fan of inquiry, it's just good, powerful questions. If you can ask yourself powerful questions it, it's a wonderful thing i'm not sure where this quote comes from I, I heard it as a quote from tony robbins um but it may be that he got it from somewhere else i don't know but I, i've always remembered this quote which was he who asks the more beautiful question gets the more beautiful answer <laughs> i love that quote and I, I find it so true so in a sense, I'm going to be offering you some powerful or beautiful questions, uh, you know, rather than the, what do I do? <laughs> why, why is nobody giving me answers? These are not beautiful questions. They will only lead you down a dark path. Um, okay, so let's do, so at the level of certainty of just looking at, you know, I want to feel certainty, then a very simple question you can ask yourself is, what am I certain about already? You know, what am I certain about already? Now, I know there's an argument on this question, which is, well, that doesn't deal with the practical specifics of, you know, whatever the, in this case, the lockdown situation is. But what it does do, it gives you access to the feeling and vibration of certainty. If you can find, well, I'm certain that, you know, the sun is going to rise and the sun is going to set. I'm certain that I'm going to breathe until I die. You know, those kind of things. They're really simple. They seem really basic, but they they give you the gift of stepping you out of the fearful external into a more 
um, vibrationally aligned internal, which is part of that dance. And so then from a state of certainty, you know, when you can get access to it on some level, then your mind is going to line up. You're going to be in a space where you can sort of receive, you know, more positive healthy thoughts or attract more positive healthy thoughts and this is a really powerful thing so just simply asking what am i certain about in the face of uncertainty everything is uncertain i don't know anything the whole world's crazy what am i certain about right now will give you access to that certainty and then similar or actually the very much the same approach if you find that really it's more not so much about certainty as a sense of an absence of direction or a, a lack of purpose or a lack of clarity again similar way to ask that is how can i access that now how can i access a sense of direction now how can i access a sense of purpose now um you know how can i access clarity and in fact that you know what am i clear about now you know what purpose can i step into now what what do I know about, you know, the direction that I'm going? These kind of questions, again, will do the same job of giving you access to that feeling and vibration. You know, so, for example, if you take that a bit deeper with direction, you know, it might be because without direction, what you're saying is, I don't know what to do, right? <laughs> so ask, what can I do? You know, what can I do? Can I clean my teeth? Can I do the dishes? Can I you know, something that you can align with so that your, your mind, your feelings and your body can come into that sense of, you know, if direction and action is, is what you're noticing really matters to you, what can I do now, even though I don't have the answers, um, is a way to, again, to help you to move towards and get into that vibration. And when it comes to purpose, remember that purpose is really a feeling, a sense, even talk about it, I've got a sense of purpose. Um, so again, you can ask yourself some powerful questions to to get a sense of of what your purpose is, and you know it it doesn't have to be you know my grand life purpose. It can be really just a sense of a sense of purpose in the moment in the day, which often comes from that sense of direction. And again, simply with clarity, is what am I clear about now? What can I get clear on now? All of these things are approaches to meet the what you're looking for with the certainty and give you access to it internally now, from which I promise you um, much more healthy, proactive, practical, solution-focused, um, better-feeling thoughts will come your way anyway. All right, the next reason why was conditioning. Um, again, this seeking of you know, external advice, you know, to get those questions answered. So again, I'm going to raise the authority response and and how if you generally have a sort of passive obedience approach to things, then I understand that this is this is going to be an issue where you're looking for for certain advice. So I think what I'd say about that, if you find that you're coming up against your conditioning, then I want you to really have a, a different approach to this. I want you to think of this as a big opportunity to come into conscious empowerment again if you go back to episode 29 um, and listen to the episode it's a really it's really good at, at letting you know how you can make that move into conscious empowerment and, and what that means really is is you can begin to build self-trust you know and, and you know ask start asking those questions in a way where you can actually give yourself some credit for knowing that you can find some answers um, and and using inquiry again gives you answers from within, because if that if that's one of the issues for you, why you're, you 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 find yourself getting stressed out when you don't when the government don't tell you what to do, then it's a, it's a really powerful thing to do is is to step more into self empowerment. And I'm not saying by the way you should have all the answers. I think we live in a life of of co creation of of. Um, interdependence not codependence interdependence we are dependent on interactions with our fellow humans and the environment and the world we're, we're in this energetic connected world uh, so again i come back to the idea of it being a dance between the two but if you find that you've got a low sense of trust with your own internal knowing your own internal connection with um, the divine order of things, then it, this this kind of situation is an excellent opportunity to practice that, to practice finding, you know, where can you begin to trust your own answers 
what can you do? These things are really powerful and they will give you the secondary gain of, of helping you to build trust in yourself, which is a really, really powerful life skill. Then the final reason why was about discomfort. And we often have, you know, issues with feeling uncomfortable. So my my general advice here, and again, this is a massive life skill. I mean, it's so powerful if you can really get this one thing, and that is to learn how to be comfortable with the discomfort. You know, even though I'm feeling discom- discomfort, um, you know, how can I find comfort within that? It sort of gets you a bit meta, you know. <laughs> you know, go a bit wider. I'm always a fan of, of, you know, stepping a little bit wider and just finding ways to be comfortable with it. It's like, what, what if, whatever this discomfort is, what if I know I'm going to be okay? Again, you can use, you can be playful with it, sort of get a sense of, um, you know, how, how you can come to peace with that discomfort discomfort feeling because the fact is however much you strive to avoid discomfort it is part of life you just have to look again at energy energy happens in waves there are ups and downs there are peaks and there are troughs and the troughs generally are translated into our bodies and our feelings and our minds as discomfort so if you can find that you 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 can come into a place where you can feel comfortable with that discomfort what you're doing is transcending the discomfort and and ultimately stepping into comfort. So it's not like you, again, completely eradicate or divorce discomfort in all its varied forms. It just means that you have like a backdrop or a baseline of comfort with the, the vaster experiences of life. This will give you the courage, um, the trust to take risks, to do things in life that maybe you've avoided. I mean, most of the blocks to you achieving the things that you'd love to achieve in life are probably due to the fact that you're uncomfortable and you avoid discomfort. And the fact is, any growth-seeking being, and I know you're a growth-seeking being because you're here listening to this podcast, um, at some point are going to have to really come to grips with feeling comfortable with the discomfort. So that's the general approach I would would get you to use, is to really... Um, look at ways of how you can find comfort with that discomfort. Have I said that enough? <laughs> You're probably wondering, well, how do I how do I do that? And again, I'd use just powerful or beautiful questions. You know, uh, literally, where can I where can I find comfort in the discomfort? And if you use that in the sense, sort of, with inquiry, remember that again. If you've listened to these podcasts for a while. I often say that inquiry is is letting the the question have the power. Ask the question, stop seeking the answer, but let the answer find you. That's the graceful way to to approach this. All right, I hope that makes a lot of sense to you. Now, I did promise you that there was kind of um, you know one solution that trumps it all. <laughs> Go back to my D and D and Lord of the Rings. It's the one ring to bind them. It's not about binding, but there is there is one approach that will solve all of your issues with uncertainty. Because if you think about it, uncertainty is a symptom of future thinking. You know, on some level, you're wondering what's going to happen in the future, and then how can I um, how can I address that now so that I don't have some horrible feeling. <laughs> That's what we're doing. So the the one solution that trumps it all is presence, coming into the present moment. Now, I know this is kind of an old chestnut that the, the drummer's been beaten of it, you know, in spirituality and personal development for thousands of years. But that's because it's really true. So I wanted to address the sort of practical ways of dealing with it without sort of saying you just have to get uber spiritual Um, But I do want to make the point that, you know, this will do the job of all of it. So becoming present just means that you come, you bring your entire attention into the present moment, just noticing what's here now. And there's many simple ways to do this. You can literally bring your attention to your breath and just spend some time noticing your breathing. That will bring your your mind, reel it back in from the future or the past, or the the projected future from the past, from experience of the past. Just breathing and noticing your breathing, or meditation practices also very good for that, especially ones like watching your breath, or my favorite meditation practices. I've got a, I don't know if you hear it sometimes, a big ticking clock in, in this room, and I can just sit and just listen to the tick, tick, 
tick of the clock, which puts my focus on a singular sound, which tends to quieten all the other sounds and certainly all the future and past thoughts. Um, you know, and there's general mindfulness practices of just, you know, bringing your attention to whatever you're doing in the moment. Um, also, it's worth saying that the processes like um, like MPA are very good for bringing you into the present moment because by the nature of, you know, MPA gives you a, a way to sort of repeat words. And through that is a practice which can bring you into present plus into the present plus, you know, often the response to it is to come into a much more present state of mind. The other thing, which I just realized I didn't mention with the discomfort, comfort with the discomfort, is, is to use the unconditional pivot exercise, which, as I've said, you'll find the full training on, on the unconditional pivot exercise in episode 27. Um, I'll link it also in the show notes, and you can download the sheet for free, which will walk you through it, which is is a way, really, to go from, you know, a sucky situation and and then bring you into a, a state of allowing yourself to feel whatever you want to feel in the future in the present now, which is very much, you know, the advice I've been giving you today. So the unconditional pivot exercise is a really good practical step-by-step -step approach to do that um, if you find a hard time with those questions or just asking those simple, beautiful questions. So I want to think you to think about um, think about presence. Um, any way you can become present is going to help you come out of the discomfort. It's going to help you not need the answers to some future question. And again, all of these, I hope you'll notice the theme, are really helping you to access states which invite better or more solution-focused thoughts and give you whatever outcome you think getting answers to those questions will give you. Because ultimately, that, I think, is the best way to navigate things through. Without dismissing that there are practical things, there are answers needed for certain things. How do I do things step by step? Um, but the more you can nurture the idea of, of how can I come into a, um, a state where the vibration already meets the goal, then you'll find that your actions, behaviors, thoughts, and feelings generally follow much more flow. Hence, I call this episode, you know, uh, Flowing Forward. All right, so um, okay, let's wrap it up then. I think the overall advice is is to sort of just smile at it, you know, relax with this, play with this. Um, if you really get that, that you can be discom um, comfortable with the discomfort, you can be certain in the uncertainty, you can be okay with uncertainty, then you'll generally relax. But again, following my own advice, if you can relax first, if you can play lightly, if you can explore you know, your way through this, have that discovery mindset that I talk about, um, your attitude, in a sense, makes all the difference. It really does. The attitude you approach it with. So again, play with these questions. Let me know how you find them. Uh, let me know your experiences with, with what's going on right now. I'd love to hear from you. As ever, you can contact me by email, joel at nonpersonalawareness.com. On various social media platforms, I'm generally at Joel Young MPA on places like Twitter and Instagram. And my profile on Facebook, there's an MPA Rocks page on Facebook, facebook.com slash MPA Rocks. And I'm just slash Joel Young on YouTube. So you can, there's loads of ways to contact me. And of course, you can always go through and I'll put, I'll put all these details in the show notes, which for today you'll find at www.beabrillianthuman.com slash 33. I'd love it if you if you do enjoy these episodes, if you share them, you can just pull up the URL from the website and just post it into social media. It's great if you can let people, rather than just sharing it blankly and people go, okay, you know, what's who's this guy? What does it mean to me? When you share it, I, I'd love it if you say why you're sharing it, what it gives you and what you think it will give, um, what value it brings to the people you're sharing it with. That helps people really connect to, to you know, why? Why would they click this link? Why would they spend half an hour listening to this guy? Uh, tell them what's in it for them. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here and for listening. Uh, that's me for today. I so appreciate you taking the time to, to be here. As ever, if you like what you hear, go and tell someone. And I will be back with you next week. Who knows what the topic is? I don't know right now. I'm thinking it'd be nice to get some in the can so I can tell you what's coming up. But right now, that's not the case. Uh, so all that remains is a big thank you for being here and to cue the moo. Mm -hmm.